going to do is we're going to for this is hiss. Uh, hiss is a ball python. Uh, ball pythons do not eat. Um, sometimes do not eat between uh, November, December, January, and February. So it's always a worry when a ball python does not eat uh, in the the middle of the season. Uh, he ate at the very beginning of the season, had a little bit of a respiratory infection, which we treated, and then we turned around and. Um, some of the, the hissing noises, some of the nasal and, and wetness that uh, uh, was heard earlier in the season has come back. So we're not 100% sure whether we have a respiratory infection or not. The mouth looks good, so we're not, I'm not real concerned that there's a, a real major infection going on. Nevertheless, what we're going to do today is force feed hiss and in the process of force feeding, hopefully supplement him th through the month of February. If we get into March, then we're going to be more aggressive if things do not return to, to normal. But by and large, I think everything will. So what we do is we use uh, chicken, baby chicken food. We heat this bottle up to for 13 seconds in the microwave, mostly to liquefy the food. And we try to get as much into the syringe as we can. Off, tap it down, express out the air. We have a tube. The tube fits in over top of the syringe. We run the food down through the tube. We then lubricate the syringe by uh, dipping it back into the food. This can be a very messy process. If you're, you're really uh, thinking hard about the mess and making sure that you, you know, wipe things off, it, it actually is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty okay. So anyway, what we are doing here is um, these are interns. This is a client, and our patient is, is Hiss, who is a ball python. New England Wildlife Center is all about education. Even in our commercial practice where we care for um, people's pets, uh, we also use that as an educational process. So what we are doing today is an educational uh, demonstration uh, with a patient's, uh, uh, with uh, a client's patient. So we're now going to take the, uh, I'm going to take the hiss from you, and I'm going to have you hold the rear end, Jennifer, and Michelle, if you can step forward and just hold the middle, and Marissa, if you can just come up here, I just need one more hand right there. Okay, and we're trying to keep him straight as possible. We're going to take the tube. The big deal about the tube is we don't want to go down the breathing tube, so we have to make sure that we pass the breathing tube and go right straight down the esophagus. And we slide that tube right down his esophagus. We keep that esophagus as straight as we can. We're going to push this tube all the way into his stomach. It's interesting, that esophagus infolds on itself, so it's sort of shaped like a U until we push something down the inside of the uh, esophagus and then it, it expands out. It's very elastic tissue. The infold is um, the vena cava, which is one of the largest vessels in the body. Now we have the tube in. We're now going to push the syringe, and you may actually feel the food rolling underneath your fingers. We slowly give the food. We then gently pull the tube out. It sometimes will snag on the teeth. You have to go gently, otherwise you'll break the teeth right out. But we're not snagging at all today. And we are done feeding Yes. Okay, now this is going to go back into his, his bag or um, box, uh, so he lays flat for a bit so that he does not uh, regurgitate what he just got. Great. Thank you very much.